I made a copy of Langland's article just for my own benefit. Uh, um, it uh, still reads very uh, currently, I, I would say. He has some couple of quite provocative remarks at the very end. So um, uh, maybe I'll get to just get to them uh, today. Um, So we had uh, the generalization. I described the generalization of functoriality um, uh, two days ago. Um, so G prime and G quasi split. Over and the generalization would be to a number field. And then you can form the Langlands L group, G hat, semi direct product of the Galois group of E over F, where E is some extension of Galois extension of F that's uh, large enough uh, to include the action of uh, the quotient of the Galois group on this group. That it comes that is it inherits from being a quasi split group and um, then functoriality has the same assertion. Namely, um, I've got two of these things and you have a. Um, uh, a mapping rho prime uh, from GL prime to GL. These are now uh, disconnected groups, um, which is an L homomorphisms, L homomorphism Both of these things are semi direct products of uh, a connected group. Uh, the dual corresponding dual group with the Galois group. And so you do have to ask that this is commutative. And those things are called L homomorphisms. Um, and um, then given an automorphic representation phi prime of G prime, there exists an automorphic representation uh, pi of G such that, um, well, I guess there's a couple of ways we could say that. Um, it's, it's exactly the same assertion as uh, we had in the case of split groups, um, but there is one um, uh, question, and that is, what about the conjugacy classes CP pi attached to an automorphic representation? They would be conjugacy classes in this group. And uh, the properties that they have, if one uh, just it generalizes slightly the things that it didn't prove about unramified conjugacy classes and HECA operators. If one uh, looks at those things and takes the generaliza natural generalizations of them, you uh, find that these conjugacy classes, C, P, I, earlier in this group, would have been in this group, are conjugacy classes in here, but unramified means that uh, the uh, is a particular condition on this, uh, uh, the projection of the conjugacy class in this group, this finite Galois group, and it is for a given unramified P, what could it possibly be but the projection um, uh, onto the, the projection in here of the Frobenius conjugacy class. So the CP pi's are conjugacy classes in here, uh, coupled with conjugacy classes in here, which are precisely the Frobenius conjugacy classes 
for every given unramified p. That's, uh, that's what happens. If one thinks about it a little bit, and really, this is what else could it possibly be? Um, if you want to include quasi split groups, you're going to have to have a conjugacy class. The CP pi's are going to have to be conjugacy classes in this product. And what would they be in here? Well, unramified uh, means uh, Frobenius conjugacy class in there for a given P. And that's, that's exactly what happens. And so then, but with that understanding of the unramified conjugacy classes, this is what we were calling the CPIs. CPI, uh, we'll use it in a moment. So I'll just write it down. We'll recall that it is. Um, remember that in the case of GLN, CP um, pi was a conjugacy class. So CP pi um, is, so CP pi equals c pi p and this is in this was in the unramified case but just to keep that in the back of our minds um, g equals gln and so the dual group is gln c and remember then this is a semi-simple conjugacy class so it's a conjugacy class of elements c p one C, P, N, these are complex numbers um, uh, in G, L, N, C. So that's what the CPs are in the unramify, in the split case, and in the non-split case, but quasi-split case, you also have the projections of these things um, onto the Frobenius conjugacy classes in here. All right. Um, and so um, the condition, there were always two ways to express the condition um, on these uh, conjugacy classes uh, when you're considering um, an L homomorphism from what the L group of what G prime L to the L group of GL. Um, you could ask that. Um, You could ask that, well, you could say CP pi equals rho prime uh, CP pi prime, just exactly the same equation that we had um, for the unwrap for the split case, um, or you could put it in terms of L functions, um, LS the unramified global L function, Ls pi r is equal to Ls little s um, pi prime r intercept composed with rho prime. So where again, in this case, uh, we're talking about L functions, even though we're now considering quasi split groups, L functions are defined as products of characteristic polynomials. That is to say, things in the general linear group, complex general linear group. So R doesn't change. R is simply a representation of the L group. That's a locally compact, non-connected group, but into it still has representations, and it's a representation of that into GLNC. Um, what does it mean to take a representation 
I I'm, I'm, apologize if I'm reiterating things that you're familiar with, but what does it mean to take, what would it mean to take a representation of uh, this semi-direct product into GLNZ? That's a group. You can talk about its finite dimensional representations. What, what would it mean? Well, uh, if uh, it is the same thing, uh, we are asking uh, that, um, well, what, what would it mean? It would mean it would be the same thing. You could take a representation of this. Um, actually, uh, what, what I want to say is, what, what is rho prime going to look like? Um, so rho prime goes into uh, um, I'm sorry, um, just uh, forget what I said uh, uh, for one for one moment. Um, but I want to then just uh, recall what we had one particular particularly uh, important um, observation in this case. So so uh, I'm going to uh, label them with an L uh, because these apply to, um, uh, actually I'm going to label them with an F. I labeled them earlier with an L. The L was particular applications to L functions, but um, uh, what would be the first observation that we made uh, in terms of L functions, but now that we're given functoriality, this applies, so these are going to be special cases, this applies where G prime is arbitrary, and G equals GLN. And so, um, and uh, we're applying what was the first special case or observation in the split case, we're just, uh, just looking at what it's going to be in the quasi split case. And um, so we, uh, uh, but we're going to take G to be GLN and G prime would just be any quasi split group. And R, we would again take it to be the standard representation of GLNC uh, on itself. Okay, so um, so let's see, there's our, there's our condition. Um, um, R is the standard representation. Uh, well, what we had before is, um, uh, a row maps the L group of G prime to the L group of G. So what is row prime? Row prime maps G L prime equals G L prime hat, semi-direct product with the Galois group over F, and that's the map into the uh, L group of G L N. And so that's equal to G L N C. Well, G L N is a split group. So this is quasi-split. It can have a non-trivial action on the Galois group onto the complex uh, dual group, but G L N is just the um, split group. And so you've got the dual group of GLNC, and then it's just the direct product of GL of the Galois group of E over F. So I guess the thing I the observation I wanted to make before is when the second group is split, what does this amount to? Well, um, we have this condition that it's completely determined. This L homomorphism is completely determined on the Galois group. So uh, even if the second group is quasi split, um, you can still, uh, you are requiring that um, uh, uh, any such 
anisotromomorphism be the identity from this piece onto this piece. So uh, what I want to say is that if you have, if you just suppose, forget about um, the case that this is just GLN, um, it, what would it, uh, if you have a row prime from the first L group onto the second one, because it's equal to the identity mapping on the two Galois groups, then you could project its image, <coughs> excuse me, you can project its image uh, onto the G uh, hat prime. And that completely determines it. And what is it? Um, well, uh, this is a, a quasi split group. There's an action of the Galois group on here. And what do you get if you map it into the L group over here? Well, you, you can either just write it down according to the definition there, or completely equivalently, you can project the image of it in here onto here, because it's, forget about GLN just for the moment, you can project for a general G hat there, and because it's got to be the identity map over here. And what is it? It's a one co-cycle, a one co-cycle um, um, uh, Um, uh, it's so let's say, um, uh, the restriction of the L homomorphism to this group um, projects onto G hat as a one co cycle from this group into G hat with the Galois action. So, um, in the case of GLN, um, we can either th think of rho prime as a map from this group onto GLNC direct product of this, where it's the identity here. Or we can think of it as a mapping, uh, because it's, that determines it completely on this group, we can think of it as a mapping from this product into GLNC. So what is rho prime in the case of GLN? In this case, rho prime is just a homo amounts to a homomorphism of this group into GLNC. So rho prime is just a representation, not only of the L group there, uh, of the dual group there, but um, into G, L, and C. So, um, um, uh, in, in this case, um, um, uh, <laughs> I'm making this thing much harder than it is. Um, so the left-hand side, so in this case, we've got this equation here. And the left-hand side of one, of star, this thing here, is um, um, I'm sorry, the right hand side of this, even in the quasi split case, uh, this uh, R uh, rho prime is can be, uh, we're taking R to be the standard rep representation. So this really is, um, um, I'm sorry, the left hand side of this is a Jacquet. Godinal L function. And 
Bond has an analytic continuation. And functional equation and uh, it also has something more than that it has control over the poles it's like the n-dimensional analog of Tate's thesis which controls completely the poles of the abelian L functions that come into Tate's thesis so with controls over the poles. There's at worst, uh, if, if um, um, we're talking about GLN with N bigger than one, and where we're talking about an irreducible representation, we're talking then about something which is in the discrete spectrum, uh, cusp form in fact, of GLN, and it has no poles at all. The only poles that it could acquire are from one-dimensional representations um, on, on, on one-dimensional unramified representations. So for all intents and purposes, it's, it, it's an entire function. That's the left-hand side. So the right-hand side, on the other hand, is an arbitrary L function. And so, all right, So that's an arbitrary Langmans L function. All right, and so um, uh, in the quasi for a quasi split group G prime, and the representation um, we uh, uh, the the right hand side is an arbitrary. Langlands L function, which I'm going to write as L upper S of um, S I prime rho prime, because R is just the standard representation, just the identity representation from GLN to itself. And so uh, rho prime um, is a representation you can either think of rho prime as a representation of the L group um, uh, of, the, of G prime into the pro direct product, or you can think of it as a one co-cycle from the L group into uh, projecting onto this thing into this group. Either way, this is a general Langlands L function and uh, functoriality in this case uh, tells us because of the theorem of Jacques Godemont, that it has analytic continuation, functional equation, and control over its poles. Is that, yes? So, uh, just, uh, mm -hmm. uh, this would be pi unramified at P. I.e., P not in S. So then you get a, that, that's when you get a conjugacy class. Right. I'm just I'm just repeating this that was like a last week. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, the, the, these are Heca operators. Um, this comes from um, the discussion that I had on HECA, HECA algebras, HECA operators, or uh, basically, or the parameters of unramified representations. Remember, this thing was um, a character. Uh, this was, as an element in here, it give, gave a character on the p-adic. It was what we do. It gave a character that we induced character on G, uh, L, uh, and Q, P that we do uh, on the Borel subgroup of that, which we induced up to G. That's correct. A collection of n complex numbers. Not 
and you get something which is not anything you get like a no token or a unit token thing? You get something um, uh, which um, is more complicated than this. You might uh, not be able to. Um, you just get, uh, for example, a mapping if it's if it's um, uh, highly ramified. Um, then you get um, a representation of GLN QP, which is supercuspital. And so there's you can't. It's going to have parameters. But the parameters of supercuspital representations at p attic places, that's a whole new problem. Um, and um, it, uh, there's nothing as simple as this that you can say. There's nothing unipotent sitting around there. Um, but uh, it's, it's a, a, um, it would be what you could call an analog of a wildly ramified um, component of the um, uh, uh, of pi. Hmm? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, this, by definition, over the Gawa group, uh, this element of the identity on the, on the Gawa component? That's right. So you can throw that away and then you just it's completely it. determined. And so the, what, what determines it then is the mapping, not of, not of G uh, uh, prime hat alone, but the whole L group, G prime hat semi-direct product of the Galois group, but its image in the connected part of the L group of G. Oh, and so, so I don't, uh, hmm? I, I do need the full L, uh, the L group. I, I can't just get this information from the G prime hat. No, no. That's what you get. That's what you get in the case of a split group. But a non-split group comes with an action of uh, the Galois group on G uh, hat, and so um, uh, um, uh, that then, uh, if you have if you have uh, such a homomorphism, you can either take it as defined down there. Or you can simply project its image onto uh, G hat, and you basically get a one co cycle. Uh, so let me uh, let me describe. Uh, this is a very um, innocuous example, uh, seemingly innocuous example, but it's a very special case of this. Two F. And this would be the example in which um, this would be the example in which, well, now this looks trivial. G prime consists of the trivial group one. Uh, and G equals G L N. What could be simpler than that? Uh, it looks like it's trivial, and I suppose uh, anybody uh, may perhaps trying to retrace Langland's steps would say, ah, this is trivial, but it's not. Um, the point is that you allow yourself, uh, by including quasi-split groups, this is kind of a philosophical point, but by including quasi-split groups, um, uh, you get a slight extension or re, uh, um, rephrasing of what happens even in the case of split groups, and even in this most innocuous case, because um, in the case of quasi-split groups, you have to have a Galois group acting on the L group. You have to form the L group with its action on uh, G hat. You've got to put it in. So that doesn't really make for a unified picture that includes all groups. And it's for that reason that Langland said, well, for all groups, we're just going to have to, if we want something consistent, we're just going to have to have a theory in which we can take the Galois group of E over F to be anything, as long as it's large enough to include the quotient uh, that in the case of quasi-split groups acts on G hat. And so Langlands right away, right at the beginning, took um, 
uh, uh, the L group for any G to be G hat semi-direct product of this, where this is some um, perhaps large Galois extension. And uh, in the case that G is split, it would just be the direct product, but in general, you would have that. So uh, with that sort of philosophical extension that Langlands said, you're going to have to have, it's, it just doesn't, it would just be a mishmash of things. If you didn't do that, you want something that holds uniformly for quasi-split and split groups. And so uh, the second example is this. Um, and then we take, well, we've got to, for the L group, what's the L group? I mean, uh, this is pretty, pretty simple. Well, what's the L group of uh, G L prime? Is just the Galois group. It's just the Galois group of E over F. And GLN, um, uh, so the second group is GLN, and so the L group of G, the L group of G is just going to be GL and C direct product of this Galois group. All right, so you've got to have an L homomorphism. Um, um, take, um, I'm going to write it as rho. So take rho um, from the Galois group. Um, well, it's, uh, I should be really writing it as rho prime for thinking of functoriality, but let's write it as rho because it's, um, uh, uh, maybe I should, maybe I'll write it as rho prime. So just, uh, it's going to have to be uh, a homomorphism of um, the Galois group into the direct product of um, GLNC with the Galois group. All right, this is, uh, it's an L homomorphism. So it's the uh, restriction of this mapping or the projection of this mapping onto here is just the identity map. That's the, uh, the condition there. So this is completely determined um, by its projection onto GLNC. And because there's no quasi-split group, um, properly pro quasi-split group here, um, the projection onto this is not a one co-cycle from the Galois group into here. It's just a representation of the Galois group. And this is so therefore uh, it amounts to the same thing um, as a representation. Um, so how uh, would it be best to say that? A representation um, an N representation rho prime from the Galois group of E over F. And we're allowing ourselves to take an arbitrary large Galois group there um, into uh, GLNC. But nonetheless, we're talking about a representation of a finite group, this Galois group, into GLNC. Um, okay, so this is... Uh, so this is just any, this is any any n-dimensional representation. Well, I guess we could even say uh, of the Galois group of f bar over f. With the understanding, an n-dimensional complex representation would be locally constant. This is a compact group. So this amounts to choosing this amounts to choosing any n-dimensional continuous representation of the Galois group. All right, and we take um, R to be the standard representation um, of GLN. And so what do we get? Well, we've got our little uh, um, identity over there. Um, 
Uh, maybe I'll leave this here and uh, put this up. And so uh, then um, we have L uh, S uh, little s pi prime um, are composed with rho prime. That equals just L because R is the standard representation. This is the same thing as um, L of s rho, where rho is um, rho prime is just a representation of the Galois group. Or uh, maybe, a, maybe, a, maybe that say we won't make it sufficiently co complicated by choosing F, uh, Galois group of F bar. And so uh, this is a standard Jacques Godin law L function. Um, so uh, this is what is this? This is equal to um, uh, the product over all p not in S um, of the determinant of one minus rho f p to the minus s to the minus one. This is precisely uh, a general Artin L function. So functoriality, if we've, we're assuming functoriality, functoriality expresses, in this seemingly um, innocuous case, it expresses a general R function, a general Artin L function, As, as what? As um, a Godemont Jacquet. L function for GLN. It just, that's just what this translates to in this very seemingly very simple case. So um, um, we'll take this up here and bring this down. So this is the second example in which G prime is the trivial group and G is equal to GLN. So it says that any op, um, Artinel function, functoriality in this case, says that any Artinel function is an automorphic, a standard jacques Godemont L function. So, pardon me? Pi prime in, uh, I'm trying to, uh, uh, Pi, pi, we have uh, two groups, G prime and G. Sorry? Uh, pi, uh, rho prime now is a representation of the trivial group, the, the L group, the L group of the trivial group. It's a homomorphism of the L group of the trivial group into the L group of G. 
Well, the L, the L group of the trivial group, we've agreed, we're going to have to include the L group of anything, even if it's a split group, we're going to have to have the L group of that, the, the dual group of that uh, semi-direct product with a Galois group. If the original group is one, we have just one times the Galois group. So rho prime is a homomorphism of the Galois group into the L group of GLN. And for that, we uh, can project its image onto GLN. And so it is just an end, it is nothing more than an n-dimensional representation of the Galois group. That's what rho prime is. Pardon me? Uh, well, I was writing it in, I was writing it in the most general form. I was translating the general statement. So uh, pi prime, why don't we say this? Pi prime is an automorphic representation of the trivial group G consisting of just the one element one. So I get it's misleading the way you write it here, but I wanted to tie it to the general formula that we had before. Pardon me? Uh, no, it's one, it's just one. Uh, I guess we could put it that way, yes. Um, uh, what, would, what would be a representation of, of a group consisting of one element? I guess, I guess there's only one representation and that would be the, the C with, uh, with no action, yes. That's right. That's right. If you just take the statement that I wrote down literally before for a general G prime and a general G and a general rho prime, um, but in this special case, you get uh, on the left hand side, you get uh, a representation of the, Gal of the uh, Galois group. There's no, there, there's, there's, and uh, on the right hand side, you get, according to functoriality, you get a, a, uh, an automorphic representation of GLN, such that their L functions match. And when you find out, when you just see for yourself, one sees one, uh, Langman saw for himself right away, that the two L functions, one of them is an Artin L function, and one of them is a Jacques Godemont L function. Fortunately, the Jacques Godemont L function, we know everything about it. We've got everything we possibly could want. Art and L functions, we don't know. And uh, so, uh, is, did you have a question? Uh huh. Uh -huh. It, it it is the image under functoriality of the uh, automorphic L function of the group one. But what's the, the critical piece of data in that is the homomorphism rho prime from the L group of the group one, which includes the Galois group. And so if you see what the most general sit, uh, rho prime would be in that situation, it is precisely a homomorphism of uh, the Galois group into GLNC. That's the data. That's another, that's the uh, way to express the data. Uh, um, it, it, uh, that's given to you by functoriality in this seemingly completely innocuous case. Pardon me? Uh, that's a very good question. And uh, this, um, I'm afraid, is the hardest case of uh, Langlands and I think anybody that's thinking about these things, Langlands uh, is, uh, people are of the view that that is the hardest case. That's going to be the hardest case of functoriality to prove. We hope to do it by the trace formula, uh, by the strategy that uh, we, it's called beyond endoscopy. Um, it's, uh, but to prove general functoriality, this seems to be the most difficult case. And the reason for it is, well, I won't get into what happens in the trace formula when you do it, but there's a lot of uh, other representations um, that, you, that are going to be very difficult 
uh, to separate from the trivial representation. Um, uh, I, let's put it another way. There's a lot of automorphic representations of GLN that have to be somehow stripped away from this, leaving only the Galois representations to be a, to compare with these uh, homomorphisms of this type. Um, and and uh, that's going to be difficult because uh, you're looking at the trace formula that gives the uh, it gives you the whole discrete spectrum of GLN. And there's a lot of stuff in there, but a piece of that, and somehow the most uh, inaccessible piece of it, is the part of the discrete spectrum that's going to be given by this process. The automorphic representations that come from irreducible representations of the Galois group. And we're going to have to, we, the, the uh, us folks that are working, I could include, uh, does include some of uh, you, some of you. Uh, have to figure out how we're going to be able to, in really quite concrete terms, strip away the contribution to the discrete spectrum in the trace formula, um, which is going to be, a, to strip it away, you're going to have to look at the more explicit geometric side and figure out how you use that to strip away the um, automorphic representations for GLN that are not of this form, leaving these ones exposed and uh, ready to hammer <laughs> with, with, the, uh, Gal with the Galois representations. Yes? Right, so uh, because the most typical case is it one, is it the case where you, you're using like trivial... Uh, That's right. So I, I stated the most general case right. of functoriality for quasi-split groups, which I think I've rubbed off. No, I guess it's right here. Uh, we've taken a very special case of that this one over here, um, uh, but this one, seemingly very simple case, is going to be the hardest case to establish a functoriality. Okay, and, and even over here, uh, uh, like you just said, that this, uh, you, you don't know what to apply today. Oh, well, yeah, there's lots of things you can say about it. Um, it's um, Components at the ramified places, you can say very clearly what they are. Um, we, we'll next week we'll start talking about what uh, the local constituents of automorphic representations are um, at the ramified places S, and that certainly has to be part of the story. And, and in fact, it's included in uh, Langland's questions, which we'll review next week. Um, um, so uh, this puts severe constraints on the automorphic representations. The, um, it, um, uh, the Archimedean component of them, for example, um, is a very, um, um, it doesn't have much structure to it. It's just comes from, um, uh, it's, almost uh, it's almost the trivial representation at the Archimedean place. Um, so, so yes, the answer to your question is there's lots of stuff, which we won't try to review now, but there's lots of stuff that, that um, this arch supposed Archimedean, uh, this uh, supposed ar uh, automorphic representation has that distinguishes it from the other ones. All of this goes back to the Bachner paper. He didn't say, he didn't speculate as to how you're going to find this automorphic representation. He just stated functoriality. Now, I don't have time to, uh, uh, if I were a little better organized, I could have done this more quickly, but I think it's probably good that it's slow because it's such a critical point. This is really a critical point in Langlet's paper. And the other half of this critical point, uh, this A, you get all art and L functions. What's the other critical part of this? Uh, the other critical part, we'll just look at, if you look at this a slightly different way, uh, it's non-abelian class field theory. Uh, for every automorphic representation, uh, for every um, rep n-dimensional representation of the Galois group, you get an automorphic representation of GLN. That's what we're seeing here. Um, but that is, uh, irreducible representations of a Galois group, those things are going to characterize the Galois group. 
So this, another way of looking at this is non-abelian class field theory. And in particular, if you look at the case of this, this functoriality, in the case n equals one, it is a precisely the Artin reciprocity law, the main theorem in abelian class field theory. So we'll, we'll review those things next week. Yes. Uh, that's a good question. There's two. Uh, there's two cases. Uh, there's two philosophies about this. Rollis and uh, others, uh, Jacquet and others, um, Pietetsky Shapiro um, worked quite hard to try to extend. So the method of Jacquet Godemont is uh, an extension uh, to GLN from what is in, what Hecke and Tate did for GL1. And the key to that was a Poisson summation formula for the Adele's modulo Q. Um, that's what Jacques Godemont generalized. They talked, uh, the, they applied Poisson summation for n by n matrix space over the Adele's modulo n by n rational matrices. And they worked with that and it's, it's, uh, it's very elegant. It, it takes some effort, but it's not hugely deep. And then, so people have been trying to do that for classical groups, try to extend this. Um, um, I'm of the <laughs> view that you, well, it's just, we, all, we all like what we work on. So uh, the other way is to try to use the trace formula to actually prove functoriality in, in other cases. And uh, so for classical groups, this uh, quasi-split classical groups, this has been done. And uh, so we do know uh, for, I guess, I think in complete generality, we do know that um, classical groups, um, uh, the L functions of classical groups, just not, not with any representation R, just for the standard representation R of their dual groups into GLN, we know the L functions for that. We know this by the trace formula, not by the- that's, that's correct. That's right. So we know it by basically proving functoriality for the mapping of the dual group of a symplectic or orthogonal group into the dual group of GLN. We know functoriality um, is true for that. But it, it's, it's both complex and interesting in that it's, uh, there are, you have to involve what are called packets of representations, L packets, both local and global. And um, it's only uh, functoriality has to be formulated in that, or I, I guess I, one would say subtle form. And um, so I'm going to, I'm just going to review, there's, there's actually other re really striking consequences that Langley hinted at uh, at the end of his article. There's four consequences. This is the second one. And so I, I will do those. One of them is Ramanujan's conjecture. And the other one is the Sato Tate conjecture. Uh, Langdon's only just had one sentence, and uh, but he hinted at it. He clearly had that in mind. So I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk about those next week, and then we'll start talking about uh, local, the local components and the local Langdon's classification, which really is a part of this uh, story.